Every living thing on earth requires water to live and grow. Think of how often we use water. Each person in the USA uses 40 to 60 gallons of water a day to cook, clean, and drink. We use creeks, rivers, and lakes for boating, swimming, and fishing. We even use water to manufacture cars and iPhones. 70% of our earth is covered in water. But did you know that only 3% of the water is drinkable, fresh water? And we as human beings can only use 1% of that fresh water because most of it is frozen in glaciers or packed in snow at the top of mountains around the world. Because we can only use 1% of the water on the earth, water is a precious and valuable resource that each of us should protect. Ever wonder how the water you use gets to you? Yeah, I know, through the faucets in your house. Well, where does the water in the faucet come from? From your well or the water company? Good guess, but actually most of the water we use comes from the hydrologic cycle. The hydrologic cycle is a series of steps in the process that brings water from the ground surface as water vapor into the sky and back to the ground surface as rain, snow, sleet, or fog. The sun causes the hydrologic cycle by energizing and heating up the water in puddles, creeks, ponds, rivers, lakes, and oceans. As the water heats up, it evaporates, turns into water vapor, and then rises into the sky. Water also evaporates from plants, rises into the air, and becomes a part of the hydrologic cycle. Air currents and wind rise up from the ground and take the water vapor up into the sky where cooler temperatures cause it to form into little water droplets, which eventually form clouds. Once the water droplets in the clouds collide, they stick together and fall to the ground as rain, snow, hail, and sleet. It's not too crazy for you to imagine that the water evaporated from puddles in your backyard could end up as rain in Virginia someday. But what exactly is a watershed? Good question. Let's find out from the administrator of the Jasper County Health Department, Tony Moore. A, a watershed is a geographic area that flows into a common drainage. And, and that common drainage ends up being a stream or a river. So, so every place in the country is, is in a watershed. Every drop of rain that falls runs one direction or another into a common basin and that base forms a stream or a watershed. Watersheds have different shapes and sizes and drain runoff from the ground, roads, and parking lots in that watershed. Everybody's yard is part of a watershed. Your backyard, front yard, street, and neighborhood are all part of the Spring River watershed in Missouri. Water is constantly moving from place to place, from smaller to larger bodies of water. The runoff from Jasper, Newton, and Berry counties in Missouri, Cherokee County in Kansas, and Ottawa County in Oklahoma flows through the Spring River watershed. Shoal Creek in Newton County, Center Creek in Jasper County, and Turkey Creek in Joplin flow to the Spring River and then into Grand Lake with the Cherokees in Oklahoma. From there, it flows into the Arkansas River, the Mississippi River, and eventually into the Gulf of Mexico, where it spreads out into the Atlantic Ocean. You could actually start floating from Jasper or Newton County, Missouri, down Shoal Creek or Center Creek to the Spring River, the Arkansas River, the Mississippi River, into the Gulf of Mexico. And you could even make it all the way to Mexico. The best part is that you would never even have to get out of your boat except when you needed to eat food and get fresh water to drink. You would be in fresh water until you got to the Gulf of Mexico where you would be surrounded by salt water you would have to carry drinking water for the whole trip because the fresh water around you may be too polluted to drink. Why is that? Well, the problem with a watershed is that everything that falls on the surface runs into that watershed. So if you change the antifreeze in your car and drain it on the ground, it stays in this watershed and it runs into the stream and creates pollution in the stream. The same way with any sort of waste product that's generated or disposed of in this area is gonna end up in your watershed. Uh, trash, anything like that that's thrown on the ground ends up in the water in this watershed. It may not seem like much, but when you combine all the pollution from all the different watersheds, it starts to add up. Well, from the health department's perspective, one of the main things that we look at is, is human waste generation and making sure that human waste is treated properly. And, and in the more rural areas, that's done through septic systems. And, and we monitor the septic systems to make sure that they're, they're working appropriately, that they're installed correctly. And, and uh, we also participate in watershed uh, partnerships. And the watershed partnerships look at 
all of the, the contributing factors that could, could affect a watershed and we look at monitoring data to, uh, to see what's going on in the, in the watershed to, to determine if there are problems or not. When you think about all of the towns and cities like yours, that is a lot of potential water pollution. And remember, we cannot use polluted water unless it's been treated. No one really means to pollute our water, but unfortunately it happens every day because people don't know how to prevent the pollution. If we are sharing water with everyone around the world, we should definitely take care of it so that everyone can enjoy it, including all living things that make up our world. You, you need to think about that. Everything you do in your yard, everything that you do on your farm, everything that you do at all is, is in somebody's watershed and that's going to affect groundwater or surface water. The good news is that we can work together to protect our water and watersheds. But remember, the protection has to start with you. First, we should stop littering and recycle. Instead of tossing your trash out the car window or leaving it on the ground when you walk away, pick it up and make sure it makes it into a trash can. Ask your parents if you can start recycling at your house. Take some cardboard boxes and mark them glass, paper, metal, and plastic. Sort your trash into these boxes. Each week, you and your family can take a trip to the local recycling center. And you can even get paid for the aluminum cans you take in. You can make some money and help protect the environment. How many items do you think your family can recycle? You can also help by checking your mom's flower beds. When fertilizing or spraying pesticides to get rid of insects, be sure to read and follow the directions. Fertilizer can be a good thing, but if you use too much fertilizer or pesticide, the extra can pollute the runoff and damage the environment. Speaking of fertilizer, you can help protect the watershed by cleaning up your pet's waste and placing it in the trash can. Family pets are great, but they produce waste too. If you keep the pet waste out of your backyard, you can help protect the watershed. Plus, it would give you a lot more room to play in your backyard without stepping in, uh, fertilizer. You can also help remind your dad that when he changes the oil, he should recycle it so that it doesn't end up on the ground and eventually into the watershed. Could you imagine drinking oil, gasoline, or poisonous antifreeze? Gross! I know we've talked about a lot, but I have one last thing that you can do to help our environment. You can improve your watershed by planting grass, bushes, and trees in your yard. When plants grow, their roots help hold the soil in place, and when it rains, plant material helps filter out pollution as the water flows through the watershed. Plants mean cleaner water from the watershed. People just need to, to understand that they, they do live in a watershed and, and what you do in your yard or what you do on your property can make a big difference in uh, the quality of the groundwater and also the surface water in the area. If you need help cleaning up your watershed, ask your teacher to help you get in touch with someone in your area who can teach you how to start. The Missouri Department of Conservation, Soil Conservation Service, your local extension office, your local Department of Health, other governmental agencies and volunteer groups such as the Missouri Stream Team are willing to teach you and to help. They can also provide you with even more information on how to improve your watershed. If we can get everyone to help clean up the Spring River watershed in our local community, in Jasper County and Newton County, Missouri, we can improve the water all the way to the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Let's start protecting our environment by getting everyone and I mean your family, friends, and your teachers to start cleaning up our watershed so that we know the water we drink, shower in, and play in is safe and clean. <laughs>